All right, and uh, I certainly count it a great uh, privilege uh, to be able to be here, and uh, uh, been been through a few things, but you know everybody's got something, right? And this just happens to be what I've got, and uh, hey, I got a dog out of it, <laughs> you know, and uh, that, and and I tell folks I got a new body coming, and so we're okay, no no real problems. And uh, it's, it's annoying at times, um, so if you'll bear with me. Um, occasionally, I have to just, I have to stop and breathe. Um, I forget to breathe sometimes. And so just, just bear with me. I'm not going to fall, fall over or anything. And um, uh, let's get the uh, introductions out of the way. I'll introduce the cute and cuddly one first. My name's Pastor Steve Hayes. And... Uh, <laughs> I pastor on the eastern shore of Maryland. Um, been there 23 years, and uh, just counted a, a great blessing to uh, be amongst these uh, preachers, their families, and of course this church. You always have been very kind to me, and uh, I certainly appreciate it. This is Bella. She's a mobility dog. Uh, she's trained uh, as a service dog, and um, she's about to get sick on me here. But uh, anyway, sorry about that. It's what the puppy's for. You all right? Yeah. up on that. You okay? All right. She's okay. Why don't you sit? Sit. Good girl. All right. And then she didn't get sick. She ate it. Um, but uh, again, that's uh, that's Bella. Is this my water? Okay. Um, you need a drink? We share. Okay. All right. Um, if you will, uh, grab your Bible and turn with me, if you will, to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. And uh, I know, I, I will drink after the dog. I will not drink after a human. Um <laughs> Don't ask me why, just John chapter six. Ooh, feel better? All right. And take a look, if you will, in John chapter six, verse 41. He says, the Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. This is Jesus Christ, the whole chapter here. He's been talking to him about uh, Moses gave him manna, but he's the bread that uh, comes down from heaven that gives him eternal life. And uh, he's, they said, uh, verse 42, and they said, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he saith, I came down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man therefore that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. Now this passage can be a little confusing. And um, I know for... Uh, uh, years and years ago it was for me and uh, the text I want to take a look at here is verse 44 he says no man can come to me except the father which hath sent me draw him you know a lot of people uh, they've got some preconceived ideas about this and they've got some ideas about um, what it means to, for God to draw them um, it's uh, you know having uh, my uh, 
the South is my heritage, and uh, so hillbilly in particular. And uh, I, I heard a lot of uh, hillbilly preaching, and um, a lot of times they would talk about uh, how you could sin away your day of grace and that uh, God calls at a certain time. And if you don't answer right then, then you have sinned away your day of grace and you can't get saved after that. You're just a reprobate and going to hell and there's nothing anyone can do about it. Um, it's not talking about Calvinism. The idea that God chose and predestined certain people to get saved and others not, um, that's not what he's talking about. If you happen to be a Calvinist, then I guess God just predestined for you to be wrong. But uh, the, uh, the idea here is that God does call sinners and he calls them to Jesus Christ. But what is this drawing? Uh, seriously, what, what is this drawing about? What, what, what exactly is it? Uh, I believe exactly what the verse says. Um, I've, uh, I've had some Greek and some Hebrew and pr promptly forgot all of it. And uh, so I'm not going to take you to any other language and say this is what it means or this is what it should say. I'm just uh, naive enough to say this is what God said. Amen. And uh, I believe exactly what God said. He said that no man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him. I believe that. But I also believe everything else God said in the Word of God. And so what I want to do this, uh, this evening for a few moments, and I, I'm not a long-winded preacher. I can't be. I run out of air. But uh, uh, I never was really too long-winded, so I'll get out of here quick. And, uh, but I want you to understand when God calls. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father of heaven, we do thank you for your blessings upon us. I thank you for a great privilege to be here and the honor to stand in front of these folks and deliver the word of God. I pray that you give me the physical ability to do so, but God, I pray that spiritually the Holy Spirit of God touches each of our hearts. Help me to be uh, clear and concise in the message. But Father, I, I do pray that, uh, that you'll touch each of our hearts if there's a soul here that's not saved, I pray that you'd uh, show them the, the way of salvation, how much you care about them, what you've done for them. And Father, those of us that are saved, I pray that you'll give us a greater burden for those that are lost. We thank you for all that you do for us and pray that you bless the preaching of the Word of God. May we lift up the Lord Jesus Christ and none other. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. The first thing I want you to see here is verse uh, 41 and 42. He says, The Jews then murmured at him because he said, I'm the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he saith, I come down from heaven? The first thing I want you to see here is what the drawing is. The drawing is understanding. It's being able to understand the things of God. You know, Proverbs talks about uh, there's, there's knowledge. That's what you, uh, what you can learn. That's what someone teaches you. And, uh, and in knowledge, you know, you know, down home we called that uh, walking around or book, uh, book sets. You know, that you, got, uh, you went and learned some things out of books. You had an instructor. He gave you some knowledge. Then there's wisdom. Wisdom is what we call walking around sense. Some people have book sense, but they ain't got no walking around sense. And wisdom is knowing how to use what you know. Uh, but understanding is different. Understanding is being able to see the hand of God in this thing. It's being able to see how God works through this thing. You know, there's a lot of uh, people that uh, they are absolutely brilliant. I, you know, I couldn't uh, design a computer. I couldn't program a computer. I'm, uh, I use one every day, but I just type on the program somebody else did. And, uh, and the fact is, is uh, you know, it takes some, uh, some genius to do some of those things. And I'm not going to deny them that. But you know, you can have an have a extremely high IQ and still not understand the things of God. The drawing here is simply understanding. It's simply God giving them the ability 
to understand spiritual things. Uh, take a look in Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. If I uh, turn to these two quick uh, for you to keep up and just you know, jot them down and look at them on your own, I do want you to look them up. He says, For all this I considered in my heart, even to declare all this, that the righteous and the wise and their works are in the hand of God. No man knoweth either love or hatred by all that is before him. Now, what he just said is that, you know, that you see things in this life. The book of Ecclesiastes, the key phrase to it is under the sun. And it's, it's a whole book written to, for God to show us that he understands how we see things. He understands our point of view, our perception of this life. And the whole book's that way. And uh, the, the book isn't written for you to uh, take uh, doctrinal statements about heaven and hell. It's about this life and what we see in this life. And so he says that no man can know these things by, by just examining the things that are in front of him. Take a look in verse 2. All things come alike to all. There's one event to the righteous, to the wicked, to the good, to the clean, to the unclean. To him that sacrifices and to him that sacrificeth not. As is the good, so is the sinner. As he that sweareth, as he that feareth an oath. There is an evil among all things that are done under the sun. That there is one event unto all. You know, the, the fact is, is what he's saying here is simply this. That, you know, what happens to a good man? He dies. What happens to a bad man? He dies. You know, the book of Ecclesiastes says, you know, whether they're good or bad, they all go the same place. Well, under the sun, that's true. A good man dies, we, we bury him. A bad man dies, we bury him. They all die, they all go to a grave. That's what he's saying in the book of Ecclesiastes, because that's our point of view. That I don't see a soul departing going to heaven. I don't see a soul that's lost, uh, departing and going to hell. All I see is a body. And that body dies and we put it in a hole in the ground. You know, the same event happens to all and the same, uh, uh, the, they all go to the same place. That's what we see under the sun. And God's saying that you can't understand spiritual things by just what's before you. That there's more to it than that. I've stood over many a, a grave a, a, or a casket in our church, and I like having church funerals. And, and so, uh, uh, you know, I, we just have a, a preaching service. Uh, I don't, I, I'm not even sure what a eulogy is, uh, but I don't eulogy anybody. I just preach. And, um, uh, you know, down home we did it for three days. Uh, here, up here, you know, we just do it once, but, but still, I mean, uh, you know, you just preach a message, and, and the thing is, is I, I tell them, when it's a Christian that's died, I tell them, look, folks, this is when we win. Yeah. I mean, you know, lost people, saved people, we can all get sick. We would all get flat tires. You all, you know, lose your electric, freezer goes out, lose a bunch of meat. I mean, it happens to everybody. But the thing is, is when that death happens, that one event happens to us all, that's when we win. But you can't see that with a physical eye. That's understanding. That's, that's where God comes in here. He's, he's talking to these Jews. He says, murmur not, because they're not getting it. You know, all through this chapter, he's talked about that, uh, that Moses gave them the manna that came down from heaven. That Moses, uh, you know, they're in the wilderness and for 40 years, uh, Moses feeds them with the manna that comes down from heaven. And he tells them, he says, uh, but, but I'm the manna that, uh, that comes down from God. And I'm the bread of life. And he tells them this, he says, except ye eat my flesh and drink my blood, ye have no part of me. Well, that, about that time, they all just, you know, they went nuts. And they're all saying, well... How in the world are, are we supposed to be cannibals now? I mean, are we supposed to, you know, he said to eat his flesh, drink his blood. 
are we, are we supposed to be cannibals and, and actually eat the body of Christ? Are we supposed to be cannibals? I mean, I thought under the law, before the law, after the law, uh, drinking of blood was uh, forbidden. And it is. I mean, in the book of Acts, when, when uh, uh, the disciples decided, uh, you know, the Gentiles getting in, and they, they said, well, let, you know, we, let's not throw the whole law at them. Just give them these four things. One of them was don't drink blood. And yet the Lord says, you have to partake of me and, and of my blood. Well, how in the world is that going to work? They couldn't get it. Because all they were looking at was this. All they were looking at was what was in front of them. All they could see was, was a man who was uh, in the flesh. And, and, uh, and they said, well, doesn't this man have a mom and dad? I mean, they were wrong. He's got a mom there, but uh, his dad's in heaven. And, uh, and you know... But they, could, they couldn't understand any of that. And you know, the fact is, is people today, they, they still miss it. There are millions of people who go to hell because they can't get this one thing here. I mean, take a look, if you will, in John chapter 6 later on in there. And uh, notice, if you will, verse 50, uh, 63. He says, it's the spirit that quickeneth. Uh, quickeneth, it's not an old English word that nobody uses anymore. Uh, how many of you cut your fingernails or you chew your fingernails? You know, whatever, it doesn't, I don't care. But, uh, but you know, I, I don't like that white part showing on my fingernails. And uh, so I cut them pretty short. And, uh, but every now and then you cut them a little too short and uh, you get in that part that's not dead anymore. You know what it's called? The quick. It's alive. We use the word every day. And the thing is, is he, is he says, it's the spirit that quickeneth. It's the spirit that makes you alive. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. What he's saying there is, I'm not talking about you being a cannibal. I'm talking about you partaking of the body and blood of Christ. Listen, the moment that you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, when you bow your head and, and you uh, trust Jesus Christ to be your Savior, that his blood washes away your sin, that he rose again the third day, you become part of the body of Christ. You're a partaker of his body. And the thing is, is that, not only that, but uh, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. First John chapter 1, verse 7, And the blood of Jesus Christ uh, cleanseth us from all sin. Colossians chapter 1, verse 14, He said, In whom we have redemption through his blood. It's not just through his death. It's not that he died of a heart attack and so we're saved. It's through his blood. And the fact is, folks, is that, is that uh, what the Lord's doing here is, is He's drawing them. He just got through saying, murmur not among yourselves. Get this thing. But you can't get it unless God opens your eyes to it. There's case after case in the, in the Word of God. The two disciples on the road to Emmaus, and they're walking along. Another fellow joins them and says, what are you guys so sad about? And they said, you know, we thought we had the Messiah. And this is the third day since uh, he was crucified. And, and, you know, are you a stranger in Israel? Don't you know what's going on? And, uh, and so uh, this man starts talking to him. And he starts out in the Old Testament and he, he just starts telling them about how uh, Adam and Eve, you know, they sinned against God and they, they lost uh, paradise. And yet God made a promise in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 about how uh, uh, she would bear a son and it would bruise uh, the, the head of Satan and, and uh, the serpent would bruise his heel. And it's the first prophecy of the Messiah. And then he goes through and he talks about Abraham and how Abraham sacrificed his son. But he told, uh, he told that, uh, those, bo those men with him, he said, you guys stay here. Me and the lad are going to go uh, up yonder and worship and return. Amen. I mean, he was guaranteed of a resurrection. 
And then uh, he goes on through there and talks about uh, uh, Moses uh, taking the, the lamb and, and how that uh, Passover lamb in Exodus chapter 12, not a bone of it was broken, just like Jesus Christ. That it's a lamb of the first year. Isn't that amazing how, that, how God works that out? This is 2017 A.D. It's not after death. Amen. You know, that's what I was taught growing up. But it's Anno Domini, in the year of our Lord. It's from the year he was born. Yeah. You know, the whole world, they say, well, over in China, they don't, if they want to do business with the rest of the world, they do. The whole world has to write our Lord's birthday every day. Amen. The whole world has to recognize this is the year 2017. They come up with all kinds of things, you know, CE and BCE, and all, nobody adopts it. You know, you got a bunch of uh, idiotic elite that think that they do, but people don't adopt it. We know what B.C. means. We, we know this is 2017 A.D. because Jesus Christ is the Lamb of the first year. I mean, and I know the, the Pope had, you know, he rearranged the calendar and all that stuff. Hey, God will use anybody, amen? He used a donkey. He knew somebody else to get the calendar right. And no, I don't think the calendar's off. Listen. God killed Moses for messing up the typology. I don't think he's going to let anybody else mess it up either. Jesus Christ, the lamb of the first year. And you know, the fact is, is that, is that uh, he goes through all that in, uh, in uh, the Gospel of Luke, and he's telling them over and over and over about how, uh, uh, how, how this worked out and this worked out and this prophecy and this typology. And he sits down, breaks bread with them, and immediately their eyes were opened. In other words, God gave them understanding and they knew it was Christ. Listen, that's the drawing of God. It's giving somebody understanding to know what's going on. The second thing, and I'll move along real quick here, is the drawing. The, draw, the drawing is unique. And now, don't write me off as a heretic yet. Hang on. God draws people to Jesus Christ. He doesn't draw them to anybody else. It was not by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood. He entered in once into the Holy of Holies, having obtained eternal redemption for us. There's no other mediator uh, between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. And uh, so the drawing of God is not going to be just drawing you to a good thing or a good person or another Messiah or another religion or whatever else. The drawing of God is going to bring you to Jesus Christ. Amen. Everybody got that? Yeah. Amen, preacher. Thank you. Everybody got it, right? Okay. So, the drawing is only to Jesus Christ. But what I want you to understand, there's a multitude of ways to get you to Jesus Christ. Okay? Uh, God draws us to Jesus Christ. But God uses a lot of things to get you to Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me give you an example. I was at a uh, southern uh, camp meeting one time. And, uh, you know, I, I, I enjoy it. And, uh, you know, I, you know it's, it's good sometimes. And, uh, but I was at this southern camp meeting, and me and Brother Terry had been to a few to, uh, at the same time. Yeah, Brother Lackey. And uh, that was a unique meeting. But this wasn't his, okay? Uh, but uh, this was uh, just a bunch of hillbillies, and, and uh, they're all preaching. And one of them got up and gave a real dramatic testimony. I mean, he talked about how, I don't know, he's in the hell's angels or whatever, and, and uh, God saved him, told him, you know, you're going to die tonight if you don't get saved, all this stuff. So the next fellow got up, and he had a testimony, and he talked about uh, how God dangled him over the fires of hell until his, at the bottom of his shoes started melting, and, and he just ran up to the altar to get saved because he knew he was going to hell right then. And, uh, and then... They asked me to get up and preach. And I really, you know, I was a young preacher, and I just, I was really intimidated. And I'm not a more than them. But, uh, I'm only kidding, I am. But, uh, but anyway, um, you know, I, I was a little worried, but I wasn't going to lie. I don't have a dramatic 
salvation experience like that. I got saved when I was nine. And, um, you, know, I, you know, I knew I'd sinned. I knew I'd done things that were wrong. Uh, to this day, I, you know, I've never been drunk or smoked or done drugs or, you know, and, but, I, but I knew that I'd sinned against God. And uh, you say, what'd you do? It's not your business. But, uh, you know, I was nine, okay? The preacher stopped by my house April 22nd, 1971 at four o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, uh, he came by and my mom and dad were there, but, but uh, he wanted to talk to me. He talked to them earlier. And so he wanted to talk to me. And I was all dressed up for Cub Scouts, about to go out the door, and he just said, uh, uh, can I talk to you for a minute? I said, sure. So I've been going to, Sun I, mean, I went to Sunday school since I was knee high to a duck. And we, you know, they put, it, mom, dad put us on the Sunday school bus and off we went. And um, so anyway, uh, I sat down with the preacher and he said, I want to tell you a story. And he opened up his Bible and he told me about uh, the virgin birth of Christ. And he said, do you believe that? I said, well, sure. That's what God said. And then he, uh, he went on about how the sinless life of Christ, he said, do you believe that? I said, sure. That's what God said. Then he went on about, uh, he started getting personal about, you know, have, have you ever sinned? And uh, yeah. And they told me that, uh, that, you know, sin deserves judgment. And uh, yeah, that's what God says. But then he told me about how Jesus Christ loved me so much that he took my place. Yes. And he hung on Calvary and, and was buried and rose again the third day. And he paid for my sin. And he asked me, he said, he loved you that much. Do you think you could trust him? I said, sure. And that's how I got saved. I didn't get saved because I felt the fires of hell. I got saved because I felt the love of God. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm very thankful for anybody who gets saved. If you were a hell's angel or you were uh, whatever else and, and you got saved later in life, I'm thankful you got saved. But do me a favor. Don't try to tell these young people that they, you know, they don't really have a testimony like yours. That they don't, you know, they don't know what it's like. They're not street smart. What's that mean? You know what street you live on? I mean, seriously. I, now listen, this is one of my pet peeves. Because I've, I've been in a lot of meetings where it's just, you know, if you haven't shot somebody, if you haven't done drugs, if you, I mean, I've heard, I've heard preachers get up there bragging about stuff that I would not repeat. And the thing is, is, listen, as far as I'm concerned, you might as well tattoo I was stupid on the top of your head. Amen? Excuse me, but some of us had enough backbone to say no when we were offered that stuff. And the, and the point is, is, is that, uh, you know, God uses a lot of things. God, you know, he says, Romans chapter 2, verse 4, verse 6, verse 4. Look it up. Anyway, he, he said, Romans chapter 2, I believe it's verse 4, that he said uh, that the goodness of God leadeth us to repentance. Yes. Amen? Amen? When you find that, tell me which one it was. <laughs> And then, uh, you know, other folks, it, you know, God uses for, thank you. Uh, other folks, God does use just severe conviction. You know, God just really works on their heart and uh, he, just, he just, you know, uh, puts a burden on them. Let me tell you something. Since I've been saved, I have been under some severe uh, conviction at times. I'd much rather be physically sick than to be under that. Amen. Yeah. Amen? But thank God for it because it helps you get right. Many times I've prayed and said, God, just don't let me get away with it. Amen. You know, just convict my heart. Don't let me get away with this stuff. And you know, the, the thing is, is God uses uh, conviction. He uses conscience. You know, Romans chapter 2, verse 15, uh, in government, it's called natural law. And uh, of course, uh, we've got a bunch of government officials who don't believe in it anymore. But the Bible says in Romans chapter 2, verse 15, that God wrote upon our hearts the law of righteousness. 
that he put the commandments of God upon our hearts. You don't have to tell somebody that some things are wrong. They know it's wrong. You have to teach them that they're okay. I mean, you have to, you have to drill it in their head to get them to deny the things of God. The point is, folks, some people come to God because they understand the love of God. Some people come to God because they understand the, uh, uh, the conviction. They understand the, the, the condemnation. The fear of God is the beginning of knowledge. Some people come simply because 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, they come to a knowledge of the truth. You know, you don't have to have an emotion. You're not saved by your emotions. I mean, if you think that, what happens the first day you w wake up with a head full of snot and you don't feel saved anymore? I'm, I'm sorry, I forgot where I was. Um, you know, but the but the fact is, is is we 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 you know we've got all these uh, spiritual crutches that we're trying to lean upon. Listen, the only crutch we've got is this. I think I told you years ago, I had an older preacher, got done preaching one time, I was uh, a lot younger, and, and um, he came up and patted me on the head, and he said, that's a good job, son. I said, appreciate it, Daddy, can I have my allowance? But, uh, and, no, I didn't. Uh, but anyway, I said, uh, I said, well, thank you. And he said, uh, he said, but you got one problem. And I thought, well, I'm willing to learn. I mean, I, honestly, I, I, I don't want to get old preacher syndrome. That's, it. That's the idea. I've been preaching 30 years and you're not going to teach me anything. Yeah. No, I would really like to keep learning. Amen. And, uh, and the fact is, is, so I said, uh, well, what can you help me with? He said, your problem's this. You're trying to just convince people they're saved by the word of God. Yeah. <laughs> Guilty. But, uh, you know, he went on to tell me about it. You, it had to be feelings and all, uh, you know, whatever. But, uh, but anyway, the point is, is that the drawing of God is understanding. It's helping, pe it's showing people to be able to understand spiritual things. That's what the drawing is. Not only that, but the drawing's unique. Listen. Don't get the idea that someone has to go through your experience to get saved. Listen, I probably shouldn't say this, but too late, it's in my head. Um, you know, I, I was talking to a preacher one time, and he's, he's the same one who told me I had the problem. But he told me that, uh, that the, the way he leads people to the Lord, when they come down to the altar, he lays on top of them. And he keeps laying there on top of them until the Holy Spirit goes through him to get to them. Now, back in the day, we'd have called him a pervert. But, I mean, that, that's, that's pretty wicked. And, and the point is, folks, is you're not... Since when does the Holy Spirit have to go through anybody else to get to you? And, and besides that, you know, it's, it's simply the fact that I'm not saved because of, of what I felt or anything else. I'm saved because of what God said. And I'm saved because I believed what God said. And the, and the point is, is that the drawing, it's understanding. The drawing is unique. It's always to Jesus Christ but it's unique in how it draws us to Christ. And then the last thing is simply that the drawing can be unanswered. You know, the, the fact is, folks, is that the drawing is there. You know, I'm not a Calvinist. Uh, I'll make a confession, I used to be. And uh, when I finally got tired of crying myself to sleep every night, begging God to make me one of the elect, uh, I finally got some Bible answers. And uh, so that's, I'm, I'm not always real compassionate about Calvinism. Uh, but, the, but the point is, is you know, God promised that he would draw all men. Here in John chapter uh, 6, he says, No man can come to, the or come to me except the Father draw him, right? Yes. But take a look in John chapter 12. John chapter 12, God always answers his own words. And so in John chapter 12, take a look if you will, 
in verse 32. And he says, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Now, in the Greek, that word is all. In the Hebrew, that word's all. In Chinese, that word's all. In hillbilly, that word's all. But it's all. Amen? I mean, that's all there is to it. It's all is all. And he said, I will draw all men unto me. John chapter 1, verse 9, he said that he, he lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Uh, they say, yeah, but you've got to get the will of God, okay? Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9, uh, the Lord's not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but his long suffering to us, we're not willing that any should uh, uh, perish, but that all, there's that word again, all should come to repentance. The fact is, it's the will of God that everybody gets saved. First uh, John chapter 2, there in verse 2, says that he sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but for the whole world. He said in 1 Peter chapter 2, he said in the last days uh, these, uh, uh, there'll be false prophets and false teachers among you, even denying the Lord that bought them. Jesus Christ paid the price for everybody. It's just up to you whether you want to answer the call or not. That's why he said to as many as receive him, to them gave you power to become the sons of God. It's not, you know, it's there. But you have to take advantage of it. You have to be willing to accept it. You have to be willing to answer the drawing. Folks say, well, how do you know if he's drawing? If you're lost, he's drawing. Amen. You know, when we pray for lost people, I tell our church... tell our church all the time when we pray for lost people we don't pray oh God save them would you please save them God wants to save them more than you want them to be saved Amen. he died for them what we're praying is God open their eyes again you've done it before do it again Amen. you promised you'd do it at some time in their life just do it again and they might say no a hundred times, but just do it again. That's what we're praying for lost people. Listen, we need understanding. If you're saved, you need understanding. You need to be able to go through your Bible and, and have some answers. Somebody told me one time, they said, well, you, you preach so uh, doctrinal and stuff. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to give folks an answer. I mean, I, I'll be honest with you. I grew up in churches where we didn't know anything. And every, I, you know, I knew I was saved. And outside of John 3, 16, I didn't have anything. And so a preacher would preach on hell. And I'd be, uh, you know, just shaking, saying, Oh, God, if I wasn't saved before, save me now. And he'd preach on the rapture. And I'd think, Oh, God, I, I, oh, I don't know if I want you to come back or not. Because, I, you know, I don't, I don't know if I'm saved or not. But, man, I got some answers. That was, listen, when I finally realized what was in this book, that was, that was you know, again, I got saved when I was nine. Uh, my repentance wasn't all that dramatic. But when I found out what the answers are in this book, that was uh, as emotional or more than when I got saved. You know, when I realized what I've got in this book, the drawing is understanding. Drawing's unique. Maybe God touches your heart in a different way than somebody else, but it's always to bring you to Christ. But is the drawing unanswered in your life? It's up to you. With every head bowed and every eye closed. As a preacher,